Hello, everybody, and welcome to our next episode on being a therapist. Today, we have with us Ruhi Samina, a psychotherapist at Pause for Perspectives. Before we go ahead, I would like to remind everybody uh, about our intention for beginning this series is for the community to know who we really are as a team and for you to be able to choose your therapist at Pause. Hi, Ruhi. Uh, welcome and thank you for doing this with me today. Hi, yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay. So, um, as I've already introduced that you're a psychotherapist here, I have a few questions lined up uh, and maybe we can begin and I'm sure a lot will open up and you can introduce yourself as we go ahead with the questions. Surely. Yeah. So, um, my very first question, uh, I ask every therapist and I'm going to ask you as well. What has motivated you to choose psychology and get into this field of being a therapist? Wow, that's an intense question. <laughs> uh, so to be very honest, uh, psychology, like bachelor's in psychology, along with the other ones, was a backup option for me because I was not getting through my med school. Uh, and my uncle, who, who was the person who leads stuff and all, and... Uh, uh, he comes from like the university and then he said, listen, you need to do this as a backup option. You're going to sort of like waste your year till you get into the other one and things like that. So that's how I was introduced to the concept of psychology. Uh, but I remember uh, the first week of the graduation school and how uh, for me it was about like, that's when I was sort of uh, was very in a close proximity with what loneliness looks like, what isolation looks like, and um, no friends, just sitting in the balcony, just staring at people walking around in groups. And, um, and, and something about that like made me feel key. This is something that I, I that, that sense of isolation was something very sharp ended for me. And I guess that's when I started to really look at uh, what does it really look like like why am I here I started to do my own reflection introspecting talking to my uh, seniors there and that's when I started to really look at oh this is something that I can really like use as a backup um, and that's how I loved myself to come closer to knowing a little bit more about the subject but apart from that it was also about it was also about just growing up how um I've grown up in a space where uh, my grandparents, great grandparents were social workers, salpanch, like they used to lead up like uh, groups of people they used to come at a place. And I used to see how they used to sort of come together and talk and there was a support group sort of a thing that what used to happen in, in our veranda at home. And uh, that's how I sort of, uh, that about that was something uh, very interesting to see how my uh, elders used to sort of hold space for everybody that used to come together. And best part was after that was celebration of food uh, and, and like how our family used to come together and discuss about certain stuff and how to sort of help that person who's seeking help. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess from there, I, 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 I picked up those things. It, it feels like it's there in my genes to be able to sort of do something, contribute back to the space that I'm coming in from. I guess that's also added up to uh, my reflections when I was doing in first month of my graduation. Yeah, from there, I've done my bachelor's and then moved into doing a PG diploma course in child psych. And then, yeah, that's how I started up. Yeah, just yeah. witnessing people around me. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I never knew uh, that part of your story. Thank you so much for sharing. And I have so many more questions, but I'm going to maybe, you know, maybe we'll create another episode or talk more about it just so interesting and it's, it's um like it's sometimes how we how we already have things planned and then we all have a backup option and you know in your case it really worked out and i think you also witnessing uh you know your family and how the health space for people has also somehow you know contributed to the way uh you hold space for others and you know view this option for yourself Thank you for sharing. It was so interesting, and I just want to know more. Um, and I'm so glad that it's brought you here. Uh, I'm looking at asking how have you been working as a therapist 
how long has it been that you've been working as a therapist at Foster Perspective? Um, I started up in 2016 when I was doing my um, PG diploma in child psychology. Uh, one of my uh, colleague, one of my friend, like classmate, was uh, already at POS, was interning at POS, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and that's how I, she introduced me to POS and that I, I started up as an intern at POS and, and um, yeah, 2016, long time. Mm -hmm. uh, I started as an intern, it was me and Arki and uh, I enjoyed the way that she used to sort of like, like engage with conversations with people and things like that. And that's when I started to really wanted to continue to sort of really stay along and hold on to that internship. Yeah, 2016 was when I started up as an intern and now a counselor. Yeah. Wow, five years. This year, I think it'll be five years for you. Yeah. And um, seems like there's been a lot of investment in those five years in yourself with the organization, the people you work. And uh, I mean, in these five years lately, uh, I'm wondering what kind of people uh, you know, you consult with, or uh, what is your area of expertise in counseling? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I see young adults, I see adolescents, um, couples, and and uh, adults as well. Um, my and and with a larger group of people, right? It is from clinical conditions to general life concerns to. Um, concerns of like getting get uh, getting to sort of look at what career looks like so I also do career counseling sort of a thing mm -hmm. and um oh and and my expertise that I could call is also like uh when I started to engage as an intern I was also witnessing mindfulness-based workshops that was happening at pause and that's how I got introduced to mindfulness and uh, I guess my journey started from 2017 in mindfulness to sort of look at how uh, because I'm I do also have experiences of anxiety so it all it helped me to navigate with my anxiety so that became my bedrock like I, I allowed myself to engage more into what mindfulness-based approach looks like. I've uh, gone through a couple of workshops and supervisions and, and I, my area of expertise became mindfulness and along the side with other narrative approaches, other approaches that sort of really calls out for my attention. Yeah, so that's that's how I've, uh, I've been engaging. Thank you, Shani. So you think you see young adults, you see couples, you... Uh also see adults and um, you do care your counseling as well and mindfulness has been constantly um, present that is one of the approaches that you use and that's your area of expertise yeah <clears throat> Sorry. um and i'm thinking of with mindfulness and all of these things that you've done at pause in the past five years uh what have been the roles that you've been playing what are the roles that you've been playing at first within your work? Wow, interesting. Uh, so I'm a supervisor. I supervise uh, other other therapists at Foster Perspective for individual and in group spaces. I am a teacher and a train, uh, trainer, teacher, and a lead uh, for short-term skill training program and uh, internship program and other mindfulness-based symptom management workshop that happens here. I'm, I also... Uh, go to these NGOs, corporate setups, MNCs as a consultant psychologist. Um, I'm also a resource person for uh, the workshop that happens uh, along the mental health awareness workshop that happens at POS. Again, in NGO schools, colleges, corporates. So that's the larger spectrum of work that I do apart from just seeing individual clients. Yeah. That's a lot of work that <laughs> And there's a lot that's on your plate, and you, but you're still able to be present for your clients amongst all this. Yeah, I guess that's that's the anchor point. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, there are days where I want to be able to. Uh, I started up by looking at larger number of clients to a point where I'm engaging into these spaces. But what keeps me going is also the sense of the collectiveness, the co uh, co collaborative way of looking at engaging into conversations with people, um, looking into how there's, there's hopes that come, becomes visible when, when we are engaging in, uh, with an intentional conversations with our people. So yeah, I guess those are the certain bits that sort of 
helps me to sort of continue with so much on that same thing. Yeah. yeah. It seems like you also really enjoy the work that you do. Yeah, definitely. From from not being able to sort of know what psychology is, but to know it uh, from last couple of years, to be able to sort of anchor myself into looking at how am I influencing people where I'm also building possibilities and hopes for them and putting out agency for them. And yeah, yeah this is what sort of anchors me, could, keeps me going. Yeah, yeah. keeps you going. Okay. And um, I have another very important question and uh, I think it'll also be helpful for you to reflect on and, you know, to share with our viewers. Um, mm -hmm. If there is anything uh, you could bring change to or contribute to in this field, what would it be, Rohi? Okay. Change and contribute to this world. Um, in the field of mental health. Yeah. yeah. I, I want to be able to sort of, like as I said before, there's like people come into this space with a lot of hope and a lot of uh, like willingness to be able to navigate with, with mm -hmm. whatever they're experiencing. And I want to be able to sort of engage with people outside this room as well, outside the therapy room as well, to be able to look at how, what, what do people know about mental health? How, what are, uh, is mental health accessible to them or not? Or, and helping them to become aware about the importance of well-being, the importance of mental well-being. Um, and I guess I want to be able to really allow myself to stretch a little bit in terms of contributing into uh, looking at and making more marginalized spaces, voices of the marginalized people more visible into our work as well. Um, and I guess that's where I want to be able to contribute as well. And, uh, and me engaging in colleges, schools and NGOs is something that I feel like it's that that's one hope that I'm already working on, and I'm, and there's a joy in it. There's a joy in to see how people are already responding. Either they know about what mental health looks like or not. But there is, uh, of course, there's a joy in that. But also to really be able to look at how they're allowing them to stretch enough to look at. Of course, there'll be stigma, but also how people are allowing themselves to stretch to see oh, what this concept really looks like. So I guess I want to be able to. Uh, contribute in that way uh, yeah yeah things like along with uh, you know being a therapist your calling is also to reach out to marginalized group spaces make mental health accessible to all and yeah. work with NGOs and colleges seems like that's very important for you and you want to be able to do that and you already are and that's your way of you know, changing things around or contributing to this field yeah. And then, then there's definitely a long way to go. Yeah. But yeah, that's hopeful about. Yeah. Wishing you luck with that, Rohi. Um, well, thank you for sharing. I'm moving to my favorite part of this interview. Our last mm -hmm. question. On being a therapist, could you please share with us what it means for you to be a therapist? What it means for me to be a therapist? Yeah. I feel like it's it's two way for me. One is noticing where I have come from and how I was I was introduced like pushed myself to introduce into what psychology really looks mm -hmm. like from low phases of my life being being at a place where everything was like I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, when I'm engaging in conversation with people or just engaging with my colleagues around what mental health looks like, I guess. Um, that's one bit that's that's really stands out for me to be able to really look at uh, like how there is support there is there is a space of um, like possibilities and hopes that people bring in to be able to sort of uh, wanting to be able to really work on themselves in a safer space and uh, I guess my hope is to really be able to uh, like what acts meaning for me as a role of a therapist is to sort of look at, like as I already said, is to sort of uh, collaboratively look at building hopes and building possibilities for my clients, uh, helping them to navigate towards what's important for them. That's one of the anchor points that I keep coming back to uh, um, and keep asking myself, uh, this person who's sitting in front of you, there is some hope that this person, uh, there's something 
because of which this person is sitting in front of me. I guess I stretch myself in that lens to to see what, why is this person sitting in front of me? What's going on for this person? And when it's accessible to me, I look at how to sort of uh, help this person become aware about it. Um, and yeah, so building agency, building accessibility around what it, how, how they're already responding, what's working, what's not working. So these are bit bit of the things that really enriches me to sort of just engage into these conversations with people. Um, yeah, and that's the amazing part that I find about um, being a therapist, where there is a lot of like when I indulge into this space, I've noticed that uh, for the last couple of years, I've noticed that how there is more collaborativeness, there's more openness that comes in, there's more humanness that comes into our conversations and that's very delightful to sort of witness uh yeah so this person who's sitting in front of you away from the uh, symptoms that the person is reporting there's much to this person so i guess those are the areas that we explore into uh um, and that's something that sort of keeps me going i guess yeah i couldn't uh, you know but just notice how there's so much beauty in what you are sharing, like when you were saying that, you know, for you to be a therapist, it means to be able to, you know, build on these hopes and make possibilities out of the stories that these people share and how you are viewing the person as a person apart from their symptoms, apart from what they're showing and just being there for that person means so much to you. Yeah. 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 Thank you for sharing that with me. Is there anything else uh, that you want to share with us before we end this session? Any takeaways, anything that's coming up for you from this? One of the things that I, when you asked me for this interview, I was like, oh, do I really have to answer that first question? And uh, and I have to sort of sit in with, like, like as I said, uh, that this is something very, like maybe the first time that I'm talking about the first question that you asked me. Um, one of the things that have allowed me to sort of continue engaging with this space for like five years now is also, is, is um, of course, my anchor points to be able to look at how do I allow myself to ground myself when I'm engaging with people. Um, so, um, so yeah, like being embodied, being able to sort of really allow myself to get reminded about what is my hope, what is my intention to to sort of see this person that I'm engaging with. Mm -hmm. So I guess these are a couple of things that sort of anchors me in to, to becoming more available for myself in the presence of my clients, available for the client that was sitting in front of me. Um, yeah, so those are the bits. Yeah, thank you. That was, it was wonderful hearing. And I'm so glad that even though there was that little, should I share this? Should I answer this? I'm so glad you did. Uh, it opened up so much more. And uh, I'm just curious to know what to do to, your, to our viewers, to people who are going to view as their therapist if mm -hmm. they're watching this. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. some of the cause to know that, you know, we are an open space allowing for people to be themselves and yeah. be very accepting. Thank you yeah. for doing this today. Thank you so much for allowing me to go with these questions. That was brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs>